Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series, Case 71. This is an amazing case, and I can guarantee you that many of you have not ever seen this case. So we have coronal and sagittal CT images through the knee. And notice that this patient has had an ACL reconstruction. We can see the tunnel of the ACL graft or the ACL reconstruction here. So that's an important part of the piece for this case. So this patient has an ACL reconstruction. And the question that I have for you is, what is the most likely diagnosis status post ACL reconstruction? Am I showing you a case of arthrofibrosis, tibial tunnel syndrome, graft rupture, or a femoral blowout fracture? What's the most likely diagnosis? So if we take a look at the cases, the choices. Arthrofibrosis, that's typically a focal form of fibrosis that occurs anterior to the graft. So that would typically occur right here in this region. And it's usually an MRI diagnosis. It's typically dark on T1, dark on T2. It limits terminal extension of the knee, status post ACL reconstruction. Very hard to see this on a CT exam. Tibial tunnel syndrome is when we get expansion of the tibial tunnel, usually with cystic change or a ganglion cyst. Again, more of an MRI diagnosis or an ultrasound diagnosis. You know, we don't see that here, certainly in this case. Graft rupture also is can be insinuated on a CT, but again, it's much more easy to discern on an MRI. We typically see disruption of the graft itself. We may have marrow edema along the anterior lateral femoral condyle, the posterior lateral tibial plateau, the kissing or the contusions that we see in a pivot shift injury. That can be suggestive of a graft rupture. But this is actually a case of a femoral blowout fracture. If we take a look here, Notice that there's a fracture along the posterior cortex of the distal femur here. And this graft is positioned way too far posteriorly. So this is a rare case of a femoral blowout fracture. And I think it's important for us to kind of talk about normally where an ACL graft should be when we're examining plane films and radiography, because many of us interpret ACL reconstruction and complications, and we look at x-rays first. So this patient has had an ACL graph. We can see the tibial interference screw right here. This line here, this vertical line, is the posterior cortex of the distal femur. And this diagonal line is Blumenstadt's line. This is along the intercondylar notch, the slope of where the ACL should normally be. And at the intersection of this line of the posterior cortex and the intercondylar notch, this is where the femoral tunnel should come. This is exactly where it should come. It shouldn't be posterior to this, but in our case, the femoral tunnel was too far posterior. So it was positioned in a location that was not optimal. And if we take a look here, notice that it's been put too far posteriorly. And then with time, it fractured the posterior cortex. And this was a rare complication that we used to see much more commonly back in the 1980s, 1990s, much more rare now because the surgical technique has improved and the placement of grafts is not done so far posteriorly. This was more common back in the day and now we've learned and orthopedic surgeons have learned that this is not the optimal way to put a graft. So we don't see this as much, but I saw this case and I thought I would share this because it's such an amazing case. We may not see many of these, but it's important to know what a femoral blowout fracture is. So always look at the position of the graphs, always assess this on playfilm radiography. And I hope this was helpful in delineating some of the complications of ACL reconstruction. Thank you so much for your attention. Tune in next week for another high yield MSK unknown case.